In this video, we're going to take a look at an antenna sharer and switcher that will allow you to duplicate that beautiful waterfall and frequency display found on new touchscreen ham radio transceivers without getting rid of your older non-display rig. cool features of radios like the ICOM 7300 is there is a nice bright touchscreen controls and waterfall charts to help you visualize the action on your frequency band. If you've done any digital work using WSJT-X and your computer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The technical term for this display is a pan adapter. The pan adapter allows you to see a wide frequency range and the waterfall chart is one way to display the information, so pan adapter and waterfall aren't exactly the same thing. Assuming you're already using WSJTX and have a transceiver and computer, you need two additional pieces of hardware. First is a software-defined radio dongle of some kind. There are lots to choose from, ranging in price from about $25 to over $100. This device provides the signal to the SDR software in your computer that allows you to listen in on the broadcast. There are several SDR software packages that work across a wide range of dongles. You can find information on both at www.rtl-sdr.com. I also have a review on the RTL SDR dongle on this channel. The second thing you'll need is the subject of this video. It's an antenna switcher that allows you to connect your SDR dongle and your transceiver to the same antenna. The SDR dongle will provide you with the input for your waterfall display and your transceiver will do what it's always done. The antenna switcher can be set to read the push-to-talk signal from the transmitter if you can access that, or simply sense the RF buildup when transmitting and then ground out the SDR receiver input so it isn't damaged when your transceiver pushes out your transmitted signal over the antenna. This isn't anything particularly new. MFJ has had such a switch on the market for several years. As is often the case though, when entrepreneurs and Chinese manufacturers team up, you can expect some inexpensive versions to come along, and that's the case here. The SDR antenna switcher is available on Banggood and lots of sellers on eBay. I got mine for about $60. That makes it just over half the price of the MFJ switcher. The best I can find is that they hit the market in late summer of this year, 2020. Let's take a look at what you'll get when you order this little switcher. So let's look at what comes in the box. First, there's just a little uh, packing label and it just describes the, the four things that are in the box. And so let's start with the uh, uh, the couterments, if you will, and we'll take a look at the various cables first. First is a first is a power cable, uh, and this looks like it may have been used for something else. Uh, not that it isn't new, but it has this kind of block on it that you might find clipped into the back of some other kind of device, and then it has uh, little connectors on this end uh, that look like it fit into some kind of maybe JST type uh, uh, connector. Um, so we could figure out how we're going to actually do that. It may end up just. Uh, clipping those off and then uh, connecting it to uh, a JST pigtail that I have for my model airplane stuff so that I can get that connected to the 12 volt power supply. Uh, and then this plug goes into the back of the, uh, the splitter itself. So that's the power cord. The next thing we have is a uh, cable with some SMA connectors on each one. This is, you know, 25, 26 uh, centimeters long, and, uh, and it's going to be used to connect the splitter to your uh, SDR dongle. 
And then last but not least, in terms of the little cables that come with this, is just a little um, uh, three and a half millimeter plug, and it's got two uh, open ends on it. And this is what you'd use if you use the push to talk output from your transmitter. I'm not gonna do that, so we're gonna leave this bagged up, but if you wanted to work this kind of manually using the push to talk uh, output from the transmitter, this is what you'd use. So here is the antenna splitter itself. So here on the front, we've got uh, uh, a couple of uh, inputs and outputs. Um, the SDR, you can input uh, the audio from the SDR. You can put input the audio from the transmitter. And then you could do a single set of headphones there, and you could listen to what was uh, coming through on the audio side of things. Um, and so this is going to be the front, uh, and then a couple of little uh, LEDs on the front, a green one and a red one. And so again, this is going to be a matter of what you choose to uh, listen to. Most of the business that we're most interested in, though, is on the back. So let's swap it around. Okay, so on the back, we've got the uh, 12 volt input, you know, 13.8 is what the, the actual number is out of most power supplies. You can see a little uh, icon there that tells you that the uh, center conductor is the positive and the outside conductor is the negative. This little red dot is covering an SMA uh, connector to the SDR. That's where that little cable would go. Uh, and then um, we've got the push to talk. Uh, input there if you were using that in kind of a manual mode with the push to talk cable that I just showed you. So here we've got a UHF connector. We'll take the uh, plastic off of it. And that one was going to your antenna. And then this one uh, would be um, going to the transceiver. So um, the signal is going to and from here. Uh, and then it's coming from here. Now, I plan to connect this up directly to the uh, power supply that powers my radio so that whenever I have the radio on, this is going to be on. If this is typical of most of these kind of devices, if this is not getting powered, if you put a switch in the power line, for example, uh, or if it comes unplugged, it's going to uh, fail safe to the ground position where this output is grounded out. And so when you transmit, the power is not going to go to this. So it needs to be powered on uh, for it to sense the RF coming from the radio to ground the SDR output so that you don't fry the front end of your SDR dongle. And so that should work as a fail safe when the power is off. Now, if you look at some of the other um, Splitters out there, there are some that have been around a while. They sometimes have delay switches. That's primarily if you're using the push to talk uh, to set a delay so that uh, um, it doesn't transfer back to the SDR too quickly. Since we're going to be using this in what I would call automatic mode, uh, I'm not going to worry about that and the fact that it's not here. I have no idea uh, what kind of a delay exists. Now, the big downside to this is you've noticed that mm -hmm. I've shown this box to you and I've shown the parts to you, you know, aside from some uh, specifications that are uh, stuck to the back of this device, there are no instructions. And I have looked, there are no instructions on the internet. Um, but the simple fact of the matter is it's a pretty simple device. So uh, if you have an idea of what it's used for, it's kind of self-evident as to how you would hook it up. So the thing to remember on this, the output power maximum is 100 watts. So you want to uh, don't want to put this on the outside of a, an amplifier or if you have a radio that outputs more than 100 watts. Uh, and then the um, here's kind of the on and release time that I was just talking about in terms of a delay. It's not um, uh, manual, but here are the uh, uh, delay times uh, less than uh, 20 milliseconds on the on time and then the release time is less than 190 milliseconds. So it's pretty doggone fast. And the insertion loss, uh, isolation and so forth is all uh, there on the bottom with an impedance of uh, 50 ohms. So that's our splitter and we'll uh, get it connected in the circuit and we'll see how it all works. 
One of the shortfalls of this little switcher is that it includes no instructions. I mean none. Anywhere. No links, no PDFs, no nothing. The good news is that it's pretty simple and very similar devices from MFJ and ELAD both have online manuals that provide enough explanation for you to get set up. Your seller's page should have some of the specifications for the device and there's a sticker on the back of the device that lists the most important ones. Most notably is the 100 watt limit. You'll want this connected in before any big RF amplifiers. My next video on this topic will include an overview of using this switcher with my transceiver and SDR dongle. The goal is to get some rig cat control going too, so wish me luck. If you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Likes and subscriptions are important to small channels like this one, so I really appreciate your making those extra couple of clicks. Thanks for watching and 73. Thank you.